In the earlier videos, we talked about the various theories for evolution of life and we also saw the experimental proof which was given by Ure and Miller. Now from this uh, video, we'll start discussing the evidences of evolution and evidences are actually the structures or the proofs which tell us that uh, a particular pattern of evolution has taken place. And we classify these various evidences that we have under certain categories. The first is morphological and anatomical. evidences. In this, we'll talk about certain structural things which are similar or different in various organisms and there are further uh, breakup heads under this. Like we'll talk about homologous, analogous organs, vestigial organs, connecting links, uh, reversion or atavism. Second category of evolution uh, evidences that we discuss are under the head of embryological. So embryological evidences that is the second category. The third category is paleontological evidences. Paleontological evidences, <coughs> sorry, evidences. Under this we'll talk about various fossils and how in which uh, time period uh, did organisms evolve? Then we will be talking about the biogeographical evidences. Under this biogeographical evidences, we'll discuss how various organisms got distributed in different parts of the globe. And fifth category is physiological. and biochemical evidences. Under this, we'll compare various physiological or metabolical activities and certain biochemical levels like certain biomolecules which help us understand how evolution has taken place. So let us start with the morphological and anatomical evidences first. So under morphological and anatomical, we will first discuss homologous organs. Homologous organs. Homologous organs, first understand the definition and we'll take certain examples. Homologous organs are those organs which have same origin or same structure and origin but may perform different functions. Now to understand this, let us take a couple of examples which we consider as homologous and then we will talk of how these structures are helping us in understanding that this is an evidence of for evolution. First homologous organ that we can discuss uh, under uh, our example category, we said they have to have same structure and origin, but they may perform different functions. So hands of man and forelimbs of horse. These have same origin, that means the tissue which forms the hands of human beings, same tissues have given rise to the four limbs of the horses. Function is slightly different. In case of hands, our hands are working hands and in case of horses, these limbs help them in running. But origin wise, structure wise means the bones, the muscles, everything is same. But function wise, they are doing certain different things. Second, hands of man and flippers of whale same structure and origin again 
but hands of man our hands are working hands whereas the flippers of whale are used for swimming so origin is same and they are performing different functions let us take certain other uh, examples also heart heart of vertebrates we know that vertebrate hearts have evolved slowly in fishes the heart was two chambered then in amphibians three chambered then in reptiles most of the reptiles three and a half chambered then birds and mammals have four chambered heart so structure wise there is slight difference compartment wise but the tissue which has given rise to this heart in vertebrates is same so hearts of vertebrates would also come under homologous organs let us take one example or couple of examples from plants also thorns of bougainvillea are homologous to tendrils of passiflora passiflora which is commonly known as passion flower and also the tendrils and tendrils of cucurbita they are also homologous homologous means now we are talking of thorns as a protective structure and tendrils which help the plant to climb up because they have weaker stem so one is helping in protection other is helping the plant to climb up but both these structures they arise from the axillary bud so the origin is same function is different so this is how we understand that certain organs though they originated from the same kind of tissue they have changed for performing a specific function because the organism's habitat has changed this evidence helps us understand divergent evolution we will discuss divergent evolution in detail later on but what exactly we mean by that is that if a group of organisms same group same species maybe and if they end up in two different totally different areas having different habitat different uh, topographical arrangement then their structures adapt to those conditions and those adaptations make those structures totally do different functions but origin is the same so from the same point they have spread out to different things so this is called the divergent evolution we will talk of divergent convergent evolutions later on but this uh, these examples also help us understand this divergent evolution so these are some of the important examples let us take one more we know that in opentia that green flat green structure which we call the phylloclad which is the stem is performing it is the stem but it is performing the function of photosynthesis and the stem of any other plant they are also homologous but they are performing different function in normal plants the stem is performing the function of supporting the leaf and other organs or structures on the plant whereas in case of opentia the stem has become thick fleshy and green to perform photosynthesis now this is an adaptation origin is same this stem is performing normal function here the stem has adapted itself to survive in dry desert conditions so under homologous organs we talk of many such organs in which the origin remains the same and the structures may perform different functions and it helps us that is this evidence homologous organs it helps us to understand divergent evolution how one type of organism with one type of structure has uh, transformed into different structures for performing specific functions similar to this but just opposite are 
analogous organs. So after homologous, our next category under same morphological and anatomical would be analogous organs. So let us talk about that now. So our second category is analogous organs. Again, let us understand what exactly we mean by analogous organs and then we'll take examples to understand this. Analogous organs are the organs with different structure and origin but perform the same function. Perform same function. Let us take a couple of examples now to understand this. We said function has to be same. Structure can be different. Origin can be different. Wings of birds and insects. Wings of birds have bones whereas the wings of insects they are made up of just the chitinous extension or it is just the chitin which is spread out into that structure. But function wise both these structures, whether it is wing of bird or wing of insect, is helping in flying. So function is same, but the origin is different. Such organs are called analogous organs. Second example, the eyes of cephalopods and eyes of man or human beings. Our eyes are meant for perception of visual uh, stimulus. Same is the case with the eyes of cephalopods. But the origin, the tissue from which our eyes and the eyes of cephalopods are formed are totally different. So structure origin is different but function wise they are performing the same function. One more example which we have already discussed a part of it in homologous organ we talked about Phyloclad. Phyloclad is stem in case of opentia and it performs the function of photosynthesis. So phyloclad of opentia of opentia and the leaves of any other plant. Origin different. This is stem and leaf is from the leaf tissue. This is performing photosynthesis and the leaf is also performing photosynthesis. So origin wise they are different but they are performing the same type of functions. Now these analogous organs they help us understand convergent evolution. We talked about divergent in case of homologous organs that is one type of tissue giving rise to different structures because they have to perform different functions. Here, if different organisms come to lie in the same kind of habitat, they need similar structures. For example, birds are also flying and insects are also flying. So the way they live or they move or locomote is by flight. And for that, the structure which is required are wings. But these wings have developed from different tissues and that is why their origin is different but they have converged to perform same function. So here again when we talk of convergent and divergent evolutions, we'll take these examples. So analogous organs help us to understand convergent evolution. So these are certain examples. Now the next subcategory under morphological and anatomical evidences is under vestigial organs.